I rarely pass up the chance to browse through a boutique, always on the lookout for trendy styles and accessories. The same can be said for today's guest, but rather than browsing, she's using her serger to sew chic. Please welcome Barbara Goldcorn. She's an expert at boutique style serging. You know, Barbara, what intrigues me about the way that you uh, approach serging is that you make it look simple and it is simple. It is Nancy and I just love the whole surging process uh -huh. and um, I try to do um, projects that look maybe look difficult but they're really very simple to make. For example my uh, textured chic pillow may look very difficult to create but with the right combo of serge stitches and fabric the process is very streamlined. Serge or Boutique, that's what's coming up next on Sewing with Nancy. Sewing with Nancy. Celebrating 30 years of sewing and quilting with Nancy Zeman is made possible by Baby Lock, a complete line of sewing, quilting, and embroidery machines and sergers. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Madeira, specializing in embroidery, quilting, and special effects threads because creativity is never black and white. Koala Studios, fine sewing furniture custom built in America. Clover, makers of sewing, knitting, quilting, and embroidery products for over 25 years. Experience the Clover difference. Amazing designs and Class A needles. The boutique style stitching that is done in this pillow or could be worn on wearable art is really not that difficult. It's a cover stitch. Not every serger will do a cover stitch, but many of them do, and it's a stitch that you'll find on purchased t-shirts or sweatshirts that look like the hem, the straight stitch on the hem, and then the underside is covered by, the wrong edge is covered by, you can see a decorative stitch, an overlock looking type stitch. Well, this is going to be, this cover stitch is going to be stitched in a grid form, as you might guess, as Barbara designed on the top of the pillow. Before doing the stitching, we're going to talk about the fabric. What makes it textured is a shrinking fabric. You can buy it from many manufacturers. We've started to grid it on a 45 degree angle, an inch and a half apart in both directions. You can pin it to the wrong side of your fabric. If you'd like, you could even add a batting in between. And it's a great technique, Barbara. Yes, it's, it's wonderful. So I'm really excited about using this fabric mm -hmm. and have used it for many projects. But let's talk about uh, how we need to set up the machine for sure. the cover stitch. So it's going to be a little different. So it's a good idea maybe to have your little in, uh, instruction sheet next sure. to you. Uh, the first thing you want to keep in mind when you're doing something like this is that you're not stitching on the edge of the machine like you usually do or the edge of the fabric. Mm -hmm. We're stitching inside from the edge. So we need to set it up with a flat table that looks almost like a setup for your sewing machine. So then I can push the fabric in as far as I need to because when I'm stitching these line the longer lines I'm going to have to get my mm -hmm. fabric through this little sure. space over here. It comes with your serger. It comes right. with your serger mm -hmm. so it makes it real easy to do. Um, as far as uh, the thread that you're going to use, um, I have chosen to use a rayon embroidery thread. It kind of mm -hmm. goes nicely with the sheen sure. of the Dupioni fabric and um, you don't have to. You could use a variegated color, you can even sure. use regular serger thread. Uh, what I prefer to choose to do with the thread is not to use a very contrasting color sure. because then it detracts from the texture when you shrink it up. So um, one um, little bit of advice that I would give to you when you're doing the cover stitch is to just have a little anchor cloth um, at the beginning and mm -hmm. the end of your seam because uh, sometimes the cover stitch tends to come apart sure. and this will just keep all the threads together. Sure. So. So you start stitching on that anchor cloth and now follow the grid. Right. So um, I also have a clear foot on here so I can see my line really well. And just uh, normal stitch length, nothing, nothing really difficult on this at all. So you're just going to follow your line. Now because we'll be shrinking this fabric, you cut the fabric and the shrinking cloth about 30 40 percent larger. A little bit larger, mm -hmm. yes, because you don't want to land up with a piece that's too small for whatever project you're going to do. So as you come through here, you just want to control the fabric that's going through there, and it's really not <laughs> hard to do. It's like top stitching. It, exactly. Just you got an extra needle. 
So when I come to the edge here, what I'm going to do is take my little anchor cloth and I'm going to place it in the front again so that I can serge off onto that piece of fabric and then I'll have that in place when I start the next row. So while Barbara starts the next row, I'm going to show you the, a finished sample that we have all sewn with the gridded form. You can see pretty contra I mean, melded fabric colors and thread colors. And then we go to the iron. And with plenty of steam, we're going to start shrinking the fabric. And Barbara, you can get a facial this way. It's wonderful <laughs> if you put your face right up there, you can feel that steam. And this is the magic of it. When I then lift this up, you'll see how it has started to become texturized. Yes. It's, it's lovely, it's lovely. And, and just one thing to remember, once it's shrunk, uh -huh. it's shrunk. So you don't want to stand there and keep steaming it because it won't shrink anymore. So this is how you can add texture with your serger. Our next Serger Boutique project adds a touch of glamour to your wardrobe with only minutes at your serger. It's a sheer, fun scarf where a rolled edge and cover stitch team up for sleek results. We'll take another close-up look at this scarf. You saw it draped on our dress form and here, fun knit fabric you chose, Barbara. Thank you. And the rolled edge finishes all four edges, but then this cover stitch, this boutique style stitch of the serger will gather and stitch down the center in one step. I'll take the easy part and that is the rolled edge and both of them are easy by the way. They are really easy. The rolled edge stitch is really a very common stitch that those of you who have a serger might be aware of. You'll have a one needle in upper looper and lower looper. We're using that rayon thread again. And s find your owner's manual and set it up accordingly. And when I serge, and Barbara, I'm sure you find the same thing. You always want to cut off a little bit of fabric when you're doing the roll of hem. That will make the edge look more rounded. So I'll just serge part of this. You'll check it on a sample to make sure you have coverage. But as, let me just, just serge a little bit more. Here we go. But as I hold this up, you'll be able to see that nice little edge that's finished around the fabric. So you finish four sides, you cut the th seal the threads, and right. then you're going to do the magic. So we don't want a scarf that's just going to look plain like this. We sure. want to add some uh -huh. kind of texture to it. So what I'm using is uh, the cover stitch, a narrow cover stitch, and I'm going to stitch this upside down because I want the loopy side to be on the right side of the scarf. Sure. That'll make it look a little bit more decorative. Now the threads, you have a thread net on your fabric, yes. on your one of your spools. Yes, so if you're going to use these really slippery rayon uh -huh. threads, uh, then you want to definitely put a thread net over them and that will control the thread from slipping off the edge. From puddling. From up. puddling mm -hmm. underneath because you really don't want that to happen. And then you'd like to have a specialty foot. Yes, this foot is just wonderful. Um, it actually is called a cover chain stitch foot uh, that you can use for when you're just doing your hems on mm -hmm. knit fabrics, but what it really does a yeah. great job is gathering. Because as the feed dogs move, this little mechanism goes up and down and causes it to gather. Yes. And then there's that differential feed. Yes. So together with the foot doing what it's supposed <laughs> to do, you're gonna make a differential feed to a fairly high number, which is right on the side here. And I would suggest doing a little test piece because sure. if it's too too tight, it might it, make the it, scarf too What number too do you small. have it at right now? I have it right now at about 1.8. Okay, Which great. I think is gonna be enough for this really sheer fabric. Oh. And then I also have a long stitch length set at the highest number, which is four. Great. So again, I have my little anchor cloth to get me going with the stitch. And we've also pressed in a seam line mm -hmm. so sure. I can sew down the middle of the scarf. So it's all in the preparation. Yes, so we're just going to lift this up because this foot sits pretty tight on the fabric. And I'm just going to follow the little markers on the front of the presser foot. And as I go along, it's going to create this magical gathered effect. Now you want to make sure when you're doing this project, Nancy, that you do use a sheer fabric and also a fabric that doesn't have a right or a wrong side. Sure because when it drapes, you definitely will see the wrong side of the fabric. So these uh, drapey soft 
knits most times um, don't have that wrong side. As Barbara's finishing the sewing, we'll just take a final look at this sheer front scarf. Two serger stitches, a little fun fabric, and a lot of boutique style. The difference between sewists and non-sewists is that those of us who sew can easily create our own accessories. Combine beads, serge fabric strips, and strips of synthetic suede to create Barbara's necklace and bracelet duo. When I saw this necklace and bracelet combo, Barbara, I was smitten because this is very clever. Well, thank you, Nancy, and very easy to make as well. There are strips that look like belt loops, with some with elastic, some with not, some with beading, added to synthetic suede and a little jewelry, jewelry accessory at the top to make the necklace or the cuff bracelet. And we're using a cover stitch again. We're using mm -hmm. the cover stitch again, except this time we're going to use a triple cover stitch. So we're going to have three rows of stitching on the top side, which and will hold the, the fabric together really well. And that three rows of stitching is accomplished by having three needles in your machine. There's room for that. And we talked about, you talked about earlier, to put on the, the table that fits to make this a flat right. area. And then the important ingredient. Yes, this is uh, the belt loop maker. And we don't really make belt loops with it, so no. we use it for a lot more fun uh, projects. It fits right on the plate, and then you line it, is, which I'm going to do, do shortly if I can get the screw in here, but you line that narrow end to go right in line with those three needles. And you have Correct. that done already. I have that done already, and mm -hmm. I, you might uh, do a little test piece just to make sure that your stitching is centered on that strip of fabric. So and, the, and the strip, by the way, is about an inch, inch and an eighth? It's an inch and an eighth. Okay. And uh, you need to make sure you cut that exactly that size, mm -hmm. otherwise it might not roll or fold okay. correctly. So the easiest way i found to get this in is just to cut a little point at the beginning, and then if you just push that through with your tweezers, just until it comes out the back, and most times when it reaches the feed dogs, mm -hmm. um, it'll start stitching. Or you could lift this up and just pull this back just a little bit so the, the feed dogs will grab the fabric. And it looks almost like the fabric's too big for this, but yes. it's, it's really not. It needs enough to fold under. So we're just going to stitch this on. And the fabric that I'm using also is a variegated fabric. Nice. Mm -hmm. And so you can, when you've got the strips made, you can cut little strips of the variegated colors that you want to use. So we're just going to feed this along, and it's just so easy to do. You don't even have to <laughs> look what you're doing. It just goes through there so fast and easy. So this strip is just going to be fabric, and then I'm going to add some elastic to another strip so that you can see it can actually be um, kind of gathered, give it a, a kind of a textured mm -hmm. look a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you can see how that just takes off. And then you want to use an elastic, Nancy, that's almost the width of the fabric strip. And that's about three-eighths three of, three of an inch. Three-eighths of an inch elastic. And this is just going to go underneath into the belt loop maker and just push it along. And it, it should start feeding out. And then when you tug on the elastic, you want to <laughs> sure. make sure it's caught up there. And then you can start stretching that. So let, why don't you stretch a little bit, pull, and... Yes, so just sew a little bit out. And after a while, you'll kind of get a feel for how much tension you need to put on the elastic. Uh -oh. And while Barbara's surging, I'll show you yes. some of the strips that have been already stitched. Here's some that have the elastic in it. Here's just the straight belt loops. You cut them about six inches long. Some synthetic suede, one and a half by two. You can glue these with a permanent glue or stitch them, overlapping some of the edges. Obviously, I'm not using glue right now, but Barbara has glued this. And then add some beads. And I have this already added. You will find that you have to kind of use the tweezers again. And Barbara, I'm just going to show our guests how in the instructions, you'll have all the finishing techniques, but what a charming cuff bracelet made with a cover stitch. For that little girl who has captured your heart, create a girly girl sundress 
choose two coordinating fabrics, then incorporate Barbara's surging techniques to create sundresses that could easily be featured in a trendy boutique. What we've done on this dress is incorporated many surging ideas. Yes. The straps are just like the sections that were made for the bracelet. Earlier we showed a rolled edge and now Barbara is going to remove one of the needles to create a chain stitch rather than a cover stitch. And wow, look at this. It stretches because the chain stitch is going to sew elastic in parallel rows right to the wrong side of the fabric. And the final touch is a overlock finish along the hemline, a real classy finish. And Barbara, the key to this is a foot. Yes, this mm -hmm. is the elastic applicator. And most times when we use this foot, we use it with an overlock stitch, but mm -hmm. we're going to do it differently today. We're going to use a chain stitch, so just a straight stitch on your serger. The elastic goes through this, and the knob at the top applies tension to the elastic, creating the gathers, Correct. part of the gathers. So you might want to run a little test piece first, just like we did on this piece of fabric. So if you turn the, the dial to the right, the righty tighty and right. the lefty loosey, yeah. that will uh, determine the amount of gathers that you're going to get uh, on your fabric. Now you, the first part of your strip has less gathers and then yes. you had less tension. Correct. And so as I was sewing along the strip, I tightened that screw and you can see at the end here, it mm -hmm. looks much better. It looks sure. like it's been gathered. And another thing you do is the differential feed. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, would take your differential feed and move it all the way up to the highest number, that will give you the best gather. Okay. And you also want a long stitch length, just like you would set it up for normal gathering on your, without elastic. So you do want to uh, mark out your lines that you're going to mm -hmm. space your elastic. You don't want to put them too close together because you have to allow for the width of the presser foot to run through those channels. So it's about an inch. About an inch works perfectly. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're going to just place this underneath here. And uh, if you go off the line a little bit, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so we're just going to, as we surge, it's now going to ruffle up the fabric. Um, the elastic is held uh, securely in place, so you mm -hmm. don't have to worry about holding that. It sits on a little platform, and um, it's not going anywhere. And you'll also find, as you uh, move down the rows of, of the, putting the elastic on, the more rows you do, the more sheared it'll look. So the first row might not look quite so gathered, but as you come down, you'll see that it's going to give you a really nice sheared look. So now I'll start the second one, and you yes. don't really need an anchor cloth, do you? You don't, because you've got the needle in the elastic, so uh -huh. that kind of serves as your anchor cloth now, so you don't have to worry about that. The one thing you will have to pay attention to a little bit is you might just need to stretch out the fabric sure. slightly so that you don't create any little tucks or creases. So I'll just pull on this sure. just a little bit and it'll just feed out the back here. It's ruffling so much that you might need to just help it out the back sure, of the press sure. foot. And there you we don't go. want to do more than about maybe five or six rows mm -hmm. of, of the ruffling. Now here you see the, the six rows that Barbara stitched on this sundress and then the finishing touch. I really like this finish using a basic overlock stitch, a narrow three thread stitch, which I have my machine set up for, made a facing for the hem, cut it about two inches wide, and then just this narrow stitch, surge the edge. Very simple as you can see, just surge along the edge, the basic stitch. And as I pull this up, let me surge a little bit more, you can see how this is just finish, finishes the edge. Well then, to hem it, meet the right side of that facing, that edge, to the wrong side of the fabric, stitch around the hemline, and then to finish, just top stitch in place. An overlock stitch, a rolled edge stitch, a cover stitch, all on this girly girl sundress.
One of my goals for the Nancy's Corner segment is to introduce you to volunteer programs. Today's organization has a very compelling mission to provide custom-made adaptive clothing to all wounded service members. Here to explain how you can become involved with so much comfort, please welcome Michelle Cuppy, who joins us via Skype. Welcome to Sewing with Nancy, Michelle. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks for having me. When I read about your service organization, So Much Comfort, I knew Sewing with Nancy viewers would come to your aid. And why don't you give our viewers a review of how So Much Comfort began? Well, we started in November of 2004. And basically, a um, gal came to us and she said that she saw a service member receive his Purple Heart at Walter Reed um, in his hospital gown because he had a fixator on his leg, which is a 36 inch of round um, halo mm -hmm. and normal clothing doesn't fit that. So I sewed a piece of clothing, a pair of fixator pants. He had not worn anything in six months and he was elated and was in tears. Okay. So we decided to get 10 ladies together here in Burnsville, Minnesota and provide 100 pieces of fixator pants between now and the springtime and hope to make a little bit of difference. Sure. Um, what happened is we got a contact from So News Magazine to be featured in their March of 2005 uh, magazine. And so we were, and what we had no idea is that we would have an outpouring of 500 volunteers from across the United States that wanted to help us out. So we kind of became, became an organization yes. uh, and decided to, you know, make this work and make a difference for these service members so they had some comfort and dignity. Now, our viewers can now see the uh, photos of the long pants so that they can fix, as you say, wrap around the fixator. But then there are also two other variations that you make. We make just the regular lounge pants and we make the dress pants. We also make boxers and t-shirts and long sleeve t-shirts. So basically any normal clothing that mm -hmm. we would have in our, in our um, closet, we provide for all of our service members. It's, it's unfortunately that we have to provide these and the unfortunate, but th what a need you are filling. I share with our viewers the number of adaptive clothing that you, your organization and your members have, have created. Well, through our volunteer seamstresses, we've been able to provide 122,000 pieces of adaptive clothing since we began. Um, this basically gets our service members out of a hospital gown um, and out into the public. I mean, we've talked to service members. We had a gentleman who had a fixator on at lawn stool that he was just laying in his bed. He got a pair of our pants, got himself in his wheelchair, and started going around and visiting people. Sure. So, Ma know. Makes a difference. Now, how we, those of us who sew and quilt can help, uh, it's all on your website. Correct. If you go under in our website under volunteer, it, there's a um, link that says request a packet. And once you do that, we send out the packet of all the clothing that we provide. Mm -hmm. You decide what it is that you want to start with and to sew. And then we send a quality piece of garment out that you um, send back in and get approved. And so we just want to make sure that all of our sewers are sewing the same um, throughout because the hospitals are expecting top quality and that's what we want to give them. Of course. Your, in your instructions are great. I mean, as a person who writes sewing instructions, I'm impressed with them. And you'll have to work with uh, hook and loop tape or Velcro and some bias tape. So you need a little sewing skill. That's correct. That's correct. Well, we have to thank Stephanie for our, our new updated um, instructions because we were cutting and pasting, and it was pretty crude our first three years. <laughs> oh, that, that's, that's, that, they're great now, so I, I know that everyone will be able to follow these with ease. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a very uh, important program. Do you know how many people now have volunteered or volunteered for you? Well, obviously people retire along yes, the way, but sure. right now we have over 800 active seamstresses. Um, we don't expect, the only thing we require of them is if we send them the garments, that we get it back within 30 to 45 days. Sure. We have our distribution facility in, in Boulder, Colorado, and what we do is we keep the bins full so that when we get the hospital orders that we're able to ship out what we need. Well, we hope we know that Sewing with Nancy viewers will help you. Thank you so much for being with us and for telling us about so much comfort. Thank you for having me. 
And thanks for watching this program of Sewing with Nancy on Serger Boutique. Next time we'll be back with our second program, again with Barbara Goldcorn. If you'd like to learn more about So Much Comfort and this program, you can watch it again on nancyzeman.com online. Everything relating to Sewing with Nancy is there. Information about the Nancy's Corner guests, you'll find that you, the website address for so much comfort there as well. So thank you for watching on public television as well as online. See you next time. Bye for now. Nancy and Barbara Goldcorn have written a fully illustrated book entitled Serger Boutique that includes all of the information from this two-part series. It's $14.99 plus shipping and handling. To order the book, call 800-336-8373 or visit our website at sewingwithnancy.com slash 2618. Order item number BK2618, Serger Boutique. Credit card orders only. To pay by check or money order, call the number on the screen for details. Visit Nancy's website at nancyzeman.com to see additional episodes, Nancy's blog, and more. Sewing with Nancy, celebrating 30 years of sewing and quilting with Nancy Zeman, has been brought to you by Baby Lock, Madeira Threads, Koala Studios, Clover, Amazing Designs and Class A Needles, Closed Captioning Funding, provided by Olissa. Sewing with Nancy is a co-production of Nancy Zeman Productions and Wisconsin Public Television.